All right, making my first pair of boots. Eh. Necropolis League has gotten off to a bit of a rough start. There are people on Reddit saying it's the worst league of all time, and there are plenty of people who are enjoying the quality of life patch, the in-game revamp, and the Scarab rework. I think most players kind of fall somewhere in between those two ends. Hi, it's Lerald, and I'm going to take a look back at the first weekend of Necropolis League and talk about what's gone wrong and what GGG can do to fix it. I'm going to borrow something from my channel manager and make a compliment sandwich. We're adults here, right? We want to give feedback on something we think needs to be changed, but sandwiching that negative feedback between things we like is a lot more effective way of being heard than just being angry on the internet. I'll go over the 3.24 patch itself, the Necropolis League mechanic, and then talk about my experiences in the campaign and early mapping and what I've been doing to get my character online. But before I do, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's just start by talking about patch 3.24. It's important to differentiate between the patch and the league because the patch is what gave us all of the quality of life improvements, the in-game rework, tier 17 maps, and so on. And these will be here after the Necropolis League has ended, so let's just kind of run through those all now. I think there have been some real massive successes here. The Atlas Passive Tree rework. Incredible success. Having three different Atlas Passive Trees. Incredible success. The bus to Kirak. Incredible success. He carried map pushing. I never stalled at any point, and I really do owe it all to Kirak. I think the Scarab rework has been really successful as well. I've been farming a ton of Scarabs, as you can see, and selling a lot of Scarabs. There have been lots of interesting combinations that we're going to be able to explore over the coming league and beyond. Farming Scarabs is a really fun Alk and Go strat. You can sprinkle it on top of basically any farm strat too. It just, it really rocks. And the ability to do a three to one recipe with Scarabs that maybe aren't very useful, like Betrayal Scarabs or whatever, that makes even the less useful ones somewhat valuable. Having multiple master missions in a single map is really good. Farming Alva and Einhar is fun. Being able to do like, that's basically sprinkle in this passive right here. Nico's packed with energy, no matter what strategy you're doing, a two point investment or maybe a little bit more if you want to put some points into guarantees in there. And now you have this insanely powerful juicing mechanic in every map for very low cost. There's a lot of other quality of life in this league as well. The portal scroll keybind has been really good. Being able to open up portals without having to open your bag is just so undervalued, so underrated. The corpse explosion sound and visual rework is extremely successful. It's way easier to tell it's happening. I have not died to a corpse explosion one time this patch. The removal of invitations felt really good while progressing through the uh, through the mapping campaign, like being able to just do the maven witnessing and not need to find an invitation. Wonderful. There's been some sort of mixed successes or I don't know, mixed results. Maybe is a better way to phrase it. Essences, the rework to essences. I accidentally uh, toggled essence on my map device on some map that I was pushing when I was like level 80 or something doing a T11. That map boss was so dangerous. I think he formatted my hard drive. Just the, the essence rework is very, very rough. Also, some of the other things, the ambush scarab rework, uh, removing, where are they? Here they are. Ambush is no longer having quant. Kind of changed the in-game juicing strategy. It's a big nerf to high-end div card farming. The removal of the Veiled Chaos Orb for early move speed boots and the very low drop rate on the Veiled Orb has been a little disappointing. Uh, I have one thing that is kind of a good change, though, or I guess a good non-change that people were scared about, which is the Void Zones do have T1 to T15 maps have a 25% chance to become one tier higher. So, you know, once you have all four of them done, it doesn't matter. Everything's a tier 16 anyway, but in the run up to that, that line at the top there that people were worried had been removed has not been removed. It's fine. Uh, you know, I, like I said, I never really had any problems sustaining maps along the way. I had more problems with dying, which we'll get to. There are also some things that were just straight up not great. The removal of the Veiled Flask mod, which I haven't gotten a single Cinder Swallow earned despite killing Katarina a bunch of times. But the removal of the uh, Reduce Mana Cost Veiled Flask mod... It wasn't unexpected, right? It was definitely overpowered, but still very painful. They also stealth nerfed regular mana flask suffixes that did the same thing. And that was not in the patch notes, but it was still nerfed. That's not great. Fixing mana is painful, and this really did make it a lot more difficult for Pathfinders to fix their mana on a lot of builds. You basically have to lean on Eldritch Battery. 
uh, tier 17s are insanely overpowered. I have gotten one tier 17 map and we're just going to look at the mods on it. 98% more monster life. Okay. Monster skills chain and chain when they collide with terrain. That's fine. No charges available. That's pretty rough. And then 80% less recovery of life and energy shield is brutal. Players and their minions deal no damage for four out of every 10 seconds is absolutely insane. And monsters spawning tormented spirits on low life is potentially pretty cool if you were to spec into Speaker of the Dead, but if you're not spec into Speaker of the Dead, that's like, you know, instant character deletion every time you get anything to half health. Just a really, like, pretty tame tier 17 by comparison with a lot of the other ones that I've seen floating around, and it seems like it would completely be undoable for my build. Like, I know that it would not be... I wouldn't even be able to do the build this, <laughs> this, uh, this map because I and reliant on Eldritch Battery to be able to cast anything, and that less recovery of Energy Shield would just make it so I could not function at all. Even if I could get through the 98% uh, more monster life and the players deal no damage four out of every 10 seconds, which I also could not handle. So tier 17s are absurd. The left mouse button skill usage removal stinks. You can still put a skill on the left mouse button to watch the cooldown, and they said that this was a necessary evil with automation support being added. I like automation support. I think it's pretty good being able to automate a defense skill like I have done here with Immortal Call is pretty cool. I lived through several Shaper Slams because of automating Immortal Call and just uh, being bad and eating a Shaper Slam, but having Immortal Call up so that I would live through it. You know, it's OK. I like that aspect of automation support, but then, you know, not being able to have an instant skill on left mouse button has really upset a lot of people. I think I got over this pretty quickly. I think I was able to move past it, but I will say just sitting in my hideout with automation support, spam casting these skills, making this sound every couple of seconds, kind of irritating. So definitely something I like to keep on a convenient keybind. And if I'm not going to be going right back into a map, I will turn off when I'm in my hideout. It does get a little annoying. It would kind of be nice if this were not auto casting in, uh, in my hideout or if I could turn the sound off or something, I would pay for an MTX to turn the sound off on stuff that's linked to automation support. That would be nice. Um, yeah, a little bit of a user experience. Not 100% great. I think another thing that people are really upset about is the removal of rare monster rewards like extra scarabs, which I mean, that makes sense with the scarab rework, but then also like bonus XP and bonus gem XP that felt a little punitive for no real reason. Leveling gems has been slower. It is noticeable and that's just anti fun. So I think people are pretty unhappy about that. Also, the soul eater rework has really irritated me. It doesn't make monsters insta kill you anymore, so it is better in that regard, but it does give them up to a stacking 90% less damage taken buff. So they, instead of becoming these just instant murder machines that now forever are capable of killing you with a thought, now they basically become unkillable until the buff has slowly fallen off, and that can take a while. So it still sucks. It's just instead of having your character annihilated from time and space, you now have to leave and come back. That's still inconvenient. Honestly, it's kind of more annoying now than it was before because before like, OK, I guess this map is destroyed or I have to get as far away as I can to leash that character, you know, leash that soul eater death machine away. Now it's more of a case of, um, oh, great. I have to remember to come back for that guy. Very annoying. Overall, I think this is a really great patch, even though there are some things about it that aren't perfect, like soul eaters. It's still really good. You can't please everyone all the time, and right now all those people are posting on Reddit. But in the end, I think it is a good patch. The in-game rework is going to keep me happy and busy exploring new things to do and combine for the entire rest of this patch cycle and into the future. Now let's talk about the current league mechanic, Necropolis. I like what it represents, but in terms of actually doing the mechanic, I don't really like it. It's three different mechanics, kind of all bundled together in one league. You have monster mods, both positive and negative. You have all flame embers that let you swap out packs of monsters for new ones with special rewards. And you have the graveyard crafting system. Before I talk about all three of those, one big aspect of the Necropolis League mechanic that I haven't really seen mentioned elsewhere is that there are four different wheels on the Atlas passive tree for supporting it. One in each of the four corners. I'll click on it here to kind of show them off. There's these two big wheels in the bottom left and bottom right corners, and then this small little half circle in the top left. 
and this sort of weird little three paw three pronged thing kind of looks like a pitchfork in the top right. And this is kind of a big deal because for other league mechanics, you really need to spec into them for them to be like worth doing at all. Imagine doing blight with no atlas passives, right? Total waste of time. I think the intention is for Necropolis to function in a similar way. This is at odds with the main mechanic of Necropolis being something you can't turn on and off. All right, now let's actually run through those three mechanics. I will throw this uh, tier two white map in to kind of show off the one, the monster mods. People hate that the monster mods can't be turned off. This is a fair criticism. It wasn't really a huge problem for me during the campaign. I think probably just because I was playing a build that's very strong and that I'm super familiar with, but I really only ran into like one monster in Act 10 that killed me over and over, but I get it. It is horrible for hardcore. I think the criticism is fair. Being able to swap them around a bit is OK, but not great. And I think the biggest disconnect here is between grinding your games and the players on the level of intended difficulty in this game. There is a conception, it seems to be, on GGG's part that this game is supposed to be hard. They've not explicitly said those exact words in that exact phrasing, at least to my memory, but I think it's clear they want this game to be hard. Players think of the game more as complex. A game being complex doesn't necessarily mean it's hard. It's hard for your brain, but that's not really the same. The problem with these monster mods is that the rewards are not comparable to the risk. I mean, you can look at this right here, this massive increase to crit chance and crit multiplier or a 1% chance to get a jeweler's orb. Perfect example. These are not the same. The ability to swap the bonuses and the downsides around from pack to pack is a cool idea, but it creates a level of annoying friction at the start of every map, as we can see. Or you're just ignoring the league mechanic. You're just putting in the map and going and it just whatever it is, it is and whatever. I like the amount of information that this little setup phase gives, telling you this guy uses these skills and this pack is this size and here's how many of them there are and there's a pack leader. That's neat, but it slows down farming and farm speed is the name of the game in Path of Exile. So I don't know that I really care long term about what's actually happening with the monsters in the map. I just want to kill them and get stuff. Separating the bonus from the downside is, I think, the fundamental problem with this league mechanic. The reason players like Eldritch Altar farming is because you get both the downside and the upside at the same time. If some altars gave downsides, and some gave upsides, and you had little or no control over what happened and when, I think people would hate Eldritch Altars. That is basically the current state of the Necropolis monster mod mechanic. I think the idea could be good, but the risk reward balance is off. This is not really anything new. It's the first weekend of a league. This kind of always happens to some extent. I mean, I guess literally it always does, right? Reddit crybots have always complained that that a new league was bad. Affliction was in exactly the same state for the first weekend and beyond, and then it was the best league ever. GGG had to make multiple tuning passes for that league to reach the state it finished in, and you know, it's the most recent league and it's already banished from everyone's shared memory. It's funny, but that criticism isn't wrong. Right now the mechanic is too dangerous and not rewarding enough. They will fix this. I believe that. And once they do, I think it's probably going to be a great juicing mechanic. Some of these bonuses like increased XP and jeweler sorbs are not good, but some of these bonuses can be 600 or 1200% quantity on a pack that you run into all the time in a map. That's pretty good for juicing. The problem is that until that point, it's kind of annoying. One final big upside of this mechanic that I have left until just now. There's no side tracking once you're in the map. There's no Crucible League cast bar and having to keep a weapon in your inventory to use. There's no Affliction Wildwood. There's no Harvest side areas. You set up the map just before zoning in. That's it. You do the map. That's it. I like that. It's a mapping league that doesn't add an extra chore into the middle of every map. And so on a relative time scale, this little bit of selection here before you join the map is fairly quick. All right, let's talk about mechanic number two, all flame members. I think they are mostly a big success. Not all of them are good. Don't misunderstand me. They're definitely not all good. Some of the monsters are super dangerous. Some of them are not all that rewarding, but some of them are, and the ability to control the monsters in your maps is a big, big A plus for me. I think the all flame members are easily the best aspect of the league mechanic right now, and then I really do like them. 
There is one big downside though, they take up a lot of space in your inventory and that can be annoying. The UI for them is not great. You also have this very small second in, uh, secondary inventory that you can stash them into, but as you can see, it's so, so small. It's, what is this, eight across and four down, 32 slots for this little necropolis locker? That's not big enough. Once you open a map and you see this UI, you can't go to your stash to pull out all flame embers if you have any stuck in there. You are restricted to just what's in your inventory and what's in the necropolis locker. That's it, and that is not great. Embers probably should not be a discrete inventory item, but then they wouldn't be tradable without some kind of other friction like bestiary orbs or something like that. So I have picked up a couple of cool embers, like some of these Old Natal embers, those are interesting. This Kalgoran uh, ember from doing some logbooks, some uh, I level 83 logbooks where I killed uh, Varana and um, whatever the sun boss's name is, I can't remember off the top of the dome. But right, I killed, you know, a couple of logbook bosses and got some cool embers, and I think that's pretty interesting. Corpses with a special craft, that kind of ties into the other mechanic that's okay. You know, it's a neat concept to have some uh, some sort of interplay between the different components of the league mechanic. Bottom line, I like the all flame members a lot. I think attaching both risk and reward to the same set of monsters is a smart move. The ability to specifically control that level of risk and reward is what makes PoE the best game that exists when it's done right. Being able to swap in and out monsters. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty fun. That's pretty, pretty cool. I think it is a great example of tying the risk and reward together, and it is how the other mechanic that is part of mapping should work. Being able to bring back tattoos with embers is really good. Other attempts at farming stuff like Chayula Breach, Stone Splinters, and Tainted Currency has not been as effective for me so far, but ultimately I like this idea a lot. I think it has legs. I think it's something that could persist beyond this league. All right, now I want to move on to the final system of Necropolis League, the Graveyard Crafting. It's not great. Let's highlight the positives and negatives, and the positive list will be pretty simple, but first off, it doesn't require hoarding a bunch of base types like in Crucible League or Synthesis League. I do think that's a big advantage. It's also not a big inventory management mechanic because of that. The direct control over which class of item you craft is good, and it doesn't really disrupt the flow of mapping much. I think these are all positives. I think these are all good aspects of this league mechanic that haven't really been like, you know, given enough credit by by detractors. Now we can talk about the negatives and there's a lot of them, but the main one really is just that it doesn't make very good gear. You can't directly control the base type without special meta crafting corpses, which means most of the time the base, ta base type that you're crafting is going to be bad. This alone makes Necropolis weaker than rock crafting from Expedition, and that's that's a pretty low bar. In maps, corpse tooltips will conceal item tooltips, which is pretty annoying. The corpses don't really have a fancy sound or any sort of big notice me indicator when they drop either. The anguish monster graphic is kind of too hard to see. I just I feel like I waste a fair amount of time running back to pick up corpses. I do like that you can click them like you can click at the far edge of the screen and it'll pick them up. That's good. But I mean, really, I mean, I've wasted 100% of the time I've picked up corpses because I can't make anything useful with this mechanic, and that's the real problem here. The idea of controlling an item stat weighting and the tiers of the mods is good. It's just not good enough at doing that to feel rewarding unless you're using 50 or 60 corpses per craft. There isn't really any middle ground for this crafting game. Either you min-max it to the absolute limit to maybe get something useful, or it's basically no different than a chaos orb. When you compare that to fossils, it's a substantial step down in quality and a substantial step up in complexity. Delve League was like six years ago. It should not feel more modern and more rewarding to the brand new League mechanic. This is also at odds with the way that they showed it to players in the trailer. They didn't have to set up a craft with 50 corpses to make some decent move speed boots with life on them and stats and whatever it was that was in the initial unveiling. The graveyard experience just also isn't really all that fun. Uh, the corpse limit is too low, I'll go show off the corpses, I like that they are tangible pieces of, like, the environment, showing them all off here, they're actually visible, that's cool, I like the aesthetic. But, because you need tons of corpses in order to skew the weights on an item high enough to actually have a decent shot at crafting something good, you have to hoard up tons and tons of corpses before you can complete a craft. This is at odds with the corpse limit, which is exactly 64. It's not enough corpses. 
Planting corpses is also slow and janky. If I want to craft a, if like, okay, let's say I wanted to craft something that has lightning mods on it, a lightning ring. Okay, I'm going to start typing in lightning. Oh no, I have to type it in every single time. Yes, I do. That's not great. The fact that there isn't any sort of tag system, like if I pull up a craft of exile page here, just to kind of compare the difference. If I wanted to look at like boots, we have all these little tags here. I can click lightning and then that'll show off. These are all the lightning tagged things. Just the, just the one. If I wanted to show off uh, speed, speed mods on boots, there we go, right? So not having any sort of clickable filters in this, it, it, having to type in what it is you're looking for on every single corpse is pretty brutal. It really makes this super, super time consuming to craft any sort of large scale item. And unfortunately, to make anything good, it has to be large scale. So it's a very, very huge time commitment to make anything with this system. I think that this was clearly intended as a fix for the common complaint about how spamming essences and alts is stressful on your wrists. And that is true. That is a good criticism of, of a thing that exists in the game. It is a good idea to fix that. But this is such a swing back in the opposite direction. And even if it were a more rewarding system, I think it would still be too time consuming compared to other mechanics. It's really just not very good right now. Rog is legitimately better. I've made several divines with Rog crafts. Some of those I wore for a while, some I just sold immediately. Rog is better than Necropolis crafting, and a big part of why is that you're able to choose the base type before you even start crafting. The good news is that it's fixable. Massively increasing the impact of the stat affinity weights and tier weights will make crafting useful items a lot easier, and that's the point of this mechanic after all. I'm willing to bet that this is what they will do over the next couple of days. The problem is that even if this mechanic does become a useful gear printing machine, I think it's still going to have the same downside of taking a while to really get going to like do all this stuff in the graveyard, planting all these corpses. <laughs> you know, they can fix this. They can add tags or do something to make sorting a little bit faster and, and less painful. But yeah, you still have the jank of having to click all the corpses. It's just it's a bit of a time consumer. And, you know, I think that capping the number of corpses that could be used in a single craft from the start would have been a good idea. That's probably something they should have had in from the very beginning of making this idea, but I don't expect them to do that now. I do think that if it were, say, six to ten corpses per item with control over stat weights being much more powerful than it currently is, that would have made this into a better mechanic than what they've given us. The experience of planting and crafting would have been better for the majority of players, right? The, the absolute high-end crafting would probably be nerfed compared to what it is now, but I think it's a numbers game here. You don't want to release a mechanic that does nothing for the vast majority of your player base. I want to like it, but I don't. It has wasted basically every second I've spent on it thus far, other than, you know, confirming whether, whether it's any good or not, which I guess that part has been useful. I don't really care for it. I prefer asset slamming over clicking dozens of graves and scrolling through the menu looking for the right mods. If the unique Necropolis mods were a lot more common and more powerful, I think that would fix a lot of the complaining that I'm doing right now about the other aspects of the graveyard crafting. Like, if I'm getting powerful mods that I can't find anywhere else, I think all of these complaints kind of go away. And I think that probably fixes a lot of the problems that people would have with the mapping as well. Like mapping is too hard. Well, if you're doing the graveyard stuff and getting incredibly powerful items like a lot more often, then you're able to power through those more dangerous mobs that are in maps. It's just that the reward structure of this particular mechanic really isn't in line with what it needs to be for all of the other things that it has going on. The friction of, of the difficulty of mapping, the friction of the time commitment, uh, spent making the items, the reward structure has to be more rewarding. For what it's worth though, I like the aesthetics here. I think the voice acting from this guy is excellent. I think the area is really good looking. I like how gloomy and spooky it is. I do think they've captured the idea of it being a spooky graveyard. Ultimately, I'm not a big fan of the league after the first weekend, but that's not a final judgment at all. I'm definitely going to spend more time exploring it. I will revise my opinion over time. I expect to have it changed before the end of the league. I want to be clear. I want to be crystal clear. I want to like Necropolis. I always want to like Path of Exile, and I'm enjoying the game. I'm just not loving the league mechanic. All right, now I'm just going to briefly run through my experience with my league start. The campaign was slower than usual due to the league mechanic. Everything went Really, according to plan, though, I did the campaign, I bought a Quill Rain, then I bought Porcupine Div cards, and I 
made a weapon, I spec'd into Kirak and skipped Unwavering Vision. We'll look at the Atlas passive tree. Of course, it's like fully fleshed out now, but I just ran right up the gut, took Kirak and all the map nodes, did not come up here to Unwavering Vision at all. I did all the Kirak nodes and the map nodes that really helped with pushing through maps. And then I spec'd into Expedition. Rog and Tujin helped me with gear and currency. And I pushed all the way up to tier 16s, killed Eater and Exarch. I set up a second Atlas passive tree with a combination of Expedition and Betrayal and farmed tier 2 dunes for Katarina for a while. I got a Devouring Diadem on my fourth kill, which seems a little lucky. Betrayal creates a ton of Scarabs. I found it to be really, really good for that. I've been selling a lot of Scarabs. And once I had the currency, I crafted a nice end game bow. As you can see here, I made this. I was very lucky with how quick this came together. I also had a made really good luck with uh, this despair on hit ring. I got it on my first shot at the harvest bench and it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I then made up for this great luck I had when it came to rolling my cluster jewels. I spent over a thousand alteration orbs setting up my cluster jewels. From there, I finished off my third and fourth void stones and that all pretty much went off without a hitch. And since then, I've pretty much finished up all of my Atlas passive points. I still have a couple of Atlas passives to go, like a four unique maps, a Coward's Trial, Poor Joy's Asylum, you know, just a couple of unique maps that I just haven't gotten around to doing yet. And I still haven't done the Feared. I haven't done the Formed either, which isn't really very hard. It's just a little expensive and I'll get to it. I just haven't done it yet. I set up my third Atlas passive tree to do Alva, Einhar, and Essence. I was thinking about doing that as a T1 initially, and then I added in the Essences, and I thought, all right, maybe we'll make a T6 map type of deal out of this. I haven't touched it yet. I've just still been doing Betrayal all this time. So I think next on the agenda is probably upgrading my support gems to Awaken gems and getting like level 21 gems across the board and kind of upgrading some of my rare pieces. Then I think I'm going to respect my initial Kirak and map sustain tree, this one here, into a high level mapping tree. I'm thinking probably either Blight or Harvest. I haven't decided yet. Maybe I'll do one as one and then the second tree is the other. I don't know. I think any of these ideas, I think they're basically infinite ideas that could be fun and profitable in the current state of the end game. So lots of stuff to play around with and explore and compare. I've been taking Scarab nodes on basically every single tree I set up. They're just like free money and uh, they're definitely a lot more fun version of Alk and Go than what we've had in the past. I don't know that Scarabs are the best possible approach, but I know that I like them and they're fun and, you know, they're uh, they're free real estate, basically. Once the bus to Necropolis League finally happen, I will fully commit to doing some Necropolis stuff. As you can see, I have taken a few points into Necropolis just to see, like, can I get some corpses? Can I make some good stuff? And the answer is yes, I can get some corpses and no, I cannot make anything useful, at least not yet. I do want to commit to playing with Necropolis, though, a full Necropolis tree as 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 soon as they post that they are they are fixing things and then actually put it out. I I will do it, but I am waiting for that point to bother. OK, I had one thing in here that is not in my notes that I just really wanted to share and it wasn't a flashbang. All right, here we go. Necropolis launch live updates. It's just one of the best bug fixes I've ever seen. Here we go. Fixed a bug where corrupting a blighted map could remove blight from it. Awesome. No notes, no criticism at all. Just one of the best uh, hotfix notes I've ever seen in any video game ever. All right, let's wrap everything up. It's kind of business as usual at PoE League start. Reddit is confident that this is the worst league of all time, just like always. And, you know, they're kind of not wrong, at least not in spirit. It is a disappointing league mechanic so far. Necropolis's monster mods are oppressive in the campaign and in maps with very little to no reward and no way to turn it off. The crafting system isn't any better than a chaos orb unless you commit massive amounts of time and effort to it. Even then, I don't know that it's actually worth using. Rog has been simpler and better. With that criticism aside, the patch is very good. So for me, I'm still really enjoying the game. It's Path of Exile. It's a new league. You can play it and have a lot of fun. I know I am. League mechanics virtually always release in a state where they need more work, and then they get it over the first couple of days. It's disappointing that this one is still in that kind of a state too, but you know what? It's tradition. Reddit is quick to forget how much they hated the return of Arch Nemesis modifiers or Calandra League or Crucible League or basically every league ever. It's always off a bit, and unfortunately this one is too. At least we're not disconnecting every 45 seconds like we did in Ultimatum League. 
The revamped in-game has been a smashing success, and I am looking forward to spending a lot more time exploring it over the next couple of months. Even if the league mechanic is underwhelming, the game is still really, really good. And you know what? Necropolis buffs are coming. I am confident of it, and I can't wait. All right, that's it. Be sure to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching. Bye.